Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Captain Jack, and I'm back with We're Not Dead Episode 2. Um, haven't played really too much in a while, but I definitely have made some progress, so I'll show you what I've done. And then uh, in this episode, which will be um, under 10 minutes, I'll just go through some um, A2 auto crafting business. Um, so last time we came over here, um, we saw what was a very much empty um, little U-shaped canyon here, and as you can see, I've put a bunch of stuff in it, um, just kind of getting a feel, I guess I'll have to edit that out, just kind of getting a feel for uh, what's going on here, I'm going to change the wall a little bit, I need like a second color to build with, I actually quarried out a whole volcano, um, but this is what I kind of uh, have done so far, um, the reactor, which you saw before, um, is now like down here and this is all very unkempt nothing's really automated um, I have it set at uh, I think 80% or something um, very 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 um, little waste because of that uh, computer craft program that's running there um, got some tesseracts going this is just kind of gonna be buried down there again it's not automated um, got my controller set up here with power in the middle uh, I've got my quarry port chest which is currently turned off um, Got this throwing out just a bunch of crap that I don't want into a garbage can. Um, I will be getting into bees um, probably next episode um, with Gendistry. I did get... Um, oh, this is a mess. Oh, there's my shovel. I was looking for that. Um, so I got forest, industrious, imperial already. Um, the goal of my bees will be to get uh, auroric bees and demandi bees um, so I can get gold and diamonds. I got, diamonds have kind of been a little bit of a problem. I'm not sure um, why. Uh, but yes, that's the goal. End game goal for bees are draconic bees so I can get uh, um, draconic ingots from them. So that'll be pretty cool. Um, so let me just show you this real quick. Um, I'm going to set up a little auto crafting grid, I think, maybe. Um, I have a small one here. Um, really, I found that you don't need massive auto crafting rigs. I know usually we do things that are really over the top, but um, this is really fast um, the way it's set up, and so uh, we'll go through that a little bit. This is similar to uh, one of those towers that you saw in the uh, other server walkthrough FTB inventions that I did. Basically, the same setup. Um, use of cable anchors to separate the different um, channel sets. So um, there's four channels here four here, four here. Um, have room for a few more channels, but I probably won't use it. Um, this is uh, handling all of my ore processing. Right now they're really slow. Um, haven't upgraded them. Actually, this is why I was making octatic capacitors. Um, and so this is handling all of my incoming ores, which I do have a lot of. Um, these here, the alloy smelter here and the sag mill here, are going to be used um, to autocraft anything that needs to go through here. Um, so like lapis dust, um, any sort of dust and stuff. Um, we're going to set up auto crafting on that little rig today. Needed some laser beams here to uh, make some of these um, genetics processors for genistry so I could get my bees going. Um, and really, that's it. Got a bunch of storage here. Um, I think they're all 16K max. So, yep, yeah, didn't do anything more than 16. Okay. And there's my program up here, 416 RF per tick, and this is just monitoring what's going on downstairs. Um, this can get up to, I think, over um, like 13,500 RF per tick, so we'll just use whatever I need. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up some um, auto crafting, and uh, we might actually release episode three of auto crafting uh, very soon. That looks to be promising. Ingram is live, and we will be uh, putting together well, I'm putting together that video. So, anyways. In order to set up auto crafting, um, this is just going to be a real quick crash course for maybe some of you guys that don't know how to do this. Probably a lot of the people that watch your channel already know what's going on with this stuff. Um, but we're going to make some 16K crafting storage, some co-processing units, and a crafting monitor. We're also going to be using some molecular assemblers and some interfaces um, so that we can do the crafting proce processes inside of them. So um, let's start off by just duplicating the setup. Um, I'm missing one interface. I could have one extra interface on here. I think I did that because... I wanted to put on one more thing onto this channel. Um, maybe it was just this. I, I don't even know. Um, the dense cable is down there. So I'm using four, eight channels. Um, so we need about seven interfaces, a um, whole bunch of uh, whatchamacallits. And I'm actually going to go backwards here. 
and I'm going to set up my system to auto craft all of this crap and then I'm going to make it and then I'm going to set up the rig so you guys know um, how to start from scratch here. Um, so I have a pattern terminal here. I have some blank patterns uh, set up and uh, the first pattern you want to make actually to craft is the blank pattern. So I'm going to craft about 30 more of these. Oh, I'm missing quartz glass. Okay, so I don't know how to make quartz glass. So I'm going to make some quartz glass. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see this. We're going to program this. I'm going to click enter. And then I'm going to throw that into um, my molecular assembler chambers. You see, I, these are the patterns that I are, I've already made. <clears throat> so some basic ones, got some B ones. Um, okay, so now it should know how to make... Uh, what on earth did, was I just going to make? Uh... Anyways, oh, I have some molecular assemblers. Uh, we don't know how to make molecular assemblers yet. Oops, 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 oops. That's a little bit of an inconvenience. I just drew a blank about what I was going to make. Anyways, um, we'll make some interfaces. We need, I think, seven of them. Okay, it knows how to make the interfaces. We're going to hit start. Seven, bam. So this little grit, little crafting rig right here is extremely fast if it's set up properly. Um, so I got my interfaces, molecular assemblers, um, that I think I will need to program. So I'm going to go into here, molecular assemblers, okay. I'm going to shift click the recipe. I'm missing two things here, so I'm going to find out what those are. Formation core and annihilation core. I'm not sure if I know how to craft those yet, but I'm going to program that. And then I'm going to program the annihilation core. Enter, program that, and then I'm going to put them using this interface terminal inside my molecular assembler, okay. so. These are going right inside of here. Um, I do want to kind of uh, split these up. You see, I, I have uh, the base capacitor here, and then a double layer, and then an octatic. I separate. Whoa, 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 whoa! I did. It did know how to make those. I'm sorry. I just uh, do do do. Didn't have. I don't know what I didn't have. But anyways, I spread these out so that um, the processing, the crafting process, could happen um, at, at the same time. I'm gonna shift click to empty these things out. And or um, sh yeah, something like that. I just want to see something. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna craft 20 of these. We're gonna craft 20 of these. Okay. And then we're gonna craft. We're gonna auto craft this. Okay. So that's why I just didn't have them. You have to have them like in your ME inventory. Okay. Now I'm gonna put this um, into here and I'm going to put it on a line that really doesn't have any other AE2 stuff so I have one here and one here but um, those will never be crafting at the same time. Um, now I'm going to search for molecular assembler and it's going to be craftable and I'm going to make like uh, 30 of them. Okay. So again the system I have set up is extremely fast um, so there we go. I have plenty of those. Um, Dense cable is already on autocraft, so I'm going to try to get some of this. Ah, crap. Wool's a problem. All right, so I'm probably not going to wire it in right now, but uh, that's okay. All right. So let's set this up. I'm just going to see how I have it set up. I'm going to put it right over here, I believe. That's empty. I'm gonna put that in there. Okay, I'm actually just gonna do one of these, just so you can get the idea. Um, I'm gonna put that there, that there, this here, this here, and then I'm gonna put interface in the middle, and then I'm gonna drop this here. Okay, so that means um, this interface can make stuff in all six of these molecular assemblers, as long as I, um, and it can also make the same recipe in multiple assemblers if I have coprocessing units, which I do have coprocessing units. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to put another um, interface here. Okay, so assembler here, assembler here, interface, assembler, assembler. Okay, and then I'm going to continue that pattern. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm also going to open up the GUI of these uh, assemblers and I'm also going to add acceleration cards to them to make them even faster. Okay, so what's going on here is Inside of all these, I have two acceleration cards, which makes them a little bit faster. Okay, like here, here, and here. And uh, if I could get into one of these chambers here, you would see that each interface. Um, oops. Oh, good grief. 
do, do each interface um, goes straight across in a line. So this represents each of my seven interfaces. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. Okay. So um, for every interface, you're going to have seven crafting um, pattern slots. And as I add more onto my system, this is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's kind of how you set up the auto crafting grid. You need interfaces surrounded by molecular assemblers. Then you need to attach it to um, your network with ME cable. So what's going on below here is I have some dense cable and it's coming down here and it's being attached to this molecular assembler. Okay, you can see how it's set up the same way and I'm working on the same pattern over here. Um, and that's going to connect everything all together. And then finally, you're going to need um, co-processing units, um, crafting monitor. Actually, this is not ne none of it's necessary. I think you just need you can have one 16k storage block. Uh, but the crafting monitor will allow you to see um, the status of anything crafting inside of there. The co-processing units again will allow um, the interface to make multiple of the same patterns um, in different molecular assemblers. And the crafting storage is how many kilobytes of storage. Um, because each uh, crafting operation takes a certain amount of storage space. So um, that's plenty of space basically for most operations. And the idea um, is going to be that I'm going to put a rig here, and then I'm going to set up another rig. It's going to be right here, so crafting monitor would appear like right here. Um, and I'm going to attach it on the system. I have four crafting, auto crafting rigs, and uh, that will be that. Um, again, expect the crafting tutorial to be out. Um, now auto crafting with the sag mill and alloy smelter just so you can see what's going on here because I am going to box all this up and uh, make it look nice. Um, I do have ME interfaces so if you take this put it inside of here you're going to get an interface just like that um, so it's part of the I think forge multi-part they call it um, so I can have multiple things inside one block and these are what you're going to want to use um, um, to make compact systems and to allow your system to auto craft things like alloys which I am going to set up now. Now in the past you would have to um, in order to name each one of these interfaces, you'd have to get a quartz cutting knife, you'd have to enter some iron in here, and then you'd have to do alloy smelter, okay? Um, that will give you the name, then you have to put that in an inscriber, inscribe it, and then combine it with your interface. Um, but now it seems to be smart, and it will um, recognize the block that you've placed the interface on inside of your system. So if I check out my interface terminal, you see how I have four alloy smelters, and I also have four sag mills down here. Um, so as soon as you slap one on there, it knows what machine it is, which is awesome. So we're going to program an alloy smelter to make um, some alloys, and we're going to make energetic alloys. So we're going to do we're going to do gold, and we're going to do redstone and glowstone. Okay, so these are the three things that we're going to need to make energetic alloy. Um, so I'm going to open up my pattern terminal. I'm going to change it to processing pattern. Okay, and then I'm going to use one gold one glowstone and one redstone to make one energetic alloy. I'm going to program that. Okay. I don't actually have to walk over there. I can actually put this pattern in from my system here, which is the beauty of the interface terminal. I'm going to go in my alloy smelter. I'm going to put this inside of here, and then it's going to actually know how to make an energetic alloy. Um, I might have to change it to alloys only. Um, but I'm about to find out if that's possible, okay? So I can open up a regular crafting thing. Um, I'm going to search for energetic. I'm going to take everything out of my system. It's going to know how to craft it. I'm going to craft like 100 of these things, and then I'm going to hit start, okay? And then over here, yep, it's in this one right here, okay? So this one is running. You can see that it's making a whole bunch of these. It's making uh, a stack of them, and inside of this interface, you see this is the pattern. So I actually use my interface terminal over there to place a pattern into this interface right here. And that's the reason why you can box these things all up, um, make them nice and compact, and you don't actually have to look in here, um, provided you know how to use interface terminal. And uh, what I would do is, if I wanted to do other alloys, so let's say I wanted to make energetic alloy, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to grab... Uh, I'm going to grab this, and then I'm going to grab an ender pearl. Okay, and since I don't have any right now, I'm actually going to load them in there. That's going to smelt up. Um, I do have import buses here, so the stuff is coming right back into the system. Okay, so I'm going to get an energetic alloy inside of here. Okay, oh, it's oh, it's vibrant. No wonder I can't freaking find it. It's I'm just saying it wrong, okay? Okay, so I have a bunch of it. Stupid me. 
Uh, I'm going to go back in, so I want my system to know how to craft Vibrant Alloy, uh, because I never want to do that again manually. So I'm going to take um, one Energetic, and I'm going to take a Ender Pearl, and put them together, and I want the outcome to be a Vibrant Alloy, and it has to be Processing Pattern. I'm going to encode that, I'm going to pull it out, and I want to be smart about which interface I'm going to put it into, because I don't want to put it here, because that would be stupid, because you actually need this to make this. So I want this operation to be happening inside of a different alloy smelter, so I can do them both at the same time. So if I go in here and I do um, Vibrant, okay, and I do Craft, um, let's say I do 300, it's going to tell me I'm missing, oh jeez, Oh, it actually won't tell me I'm missing anything because it knows how to make energetic alloy now. So I definitely don't want to craft 300 of them. But uh, dude, I'll take this out. We'll craft 10 of them. Okay. Oh, no crafting CPUs um, are available right now. So that's a little bit of a problem. Um, but anyways, that is how you would do it. So it's it's still working on these. So it can't do the both operations at the same time. Oh, I'm losing power here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, next episode, I'm going to clean this place up a little bit, maybe. Um, you can see these bees have been running forever. A bunch of my queens got lost. But I'm um, going to get into this a little bit because bees are awesome. And uh, Genistry makes them super easy. Uh, but until then, uh, this is Captain Jack. Uh, we are now, Oh, this is, this is cool, too. It's telling me what's actually crafting. So it's waiting for more energetic alloy. Um, but it knows how to make it. Um, anyways. Um, so yeah, that's it for this episode. Uh, stay tuned for more. Hopefully we'll get that AE2 um, episode 3 out so you can have all the official information about all this crap that I just kind of uh, went over very quickly. Um, so until then, stay poised guys.